Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heels. What's going on, guys? And today we're back to discuss Marvel's Blood Hunt number two. We do have a review video for issue one of Marvel's Blood Hunt. Definitely check that out because we're about to jump right into the story. Todd, what did you think the story was in issue two? Uh, basically, uh, Blade has kind of got what he's wanted so far. He's uh, got three of the more powerful Avengers down, Thor, uh, Scarlet Witch, and the Black Panther. Mm. He's wanting the Blood Coven to track down his daughter. Uh, they go for her. They kind of run upon her and Dracula, and the Avengers show back up, and they kind of they win a victory over the Blood Coven. They kind of take it to them a little bit. A little bit. bit of a different story this time yeah. around, and we have a uh, kind of a reveal we'll get to right at the end of the book here. We have a kind of a big reveal at the end of issue one mm -hmm. with Blade being kind of revealed as being the mastermind behind the plot and uh, seemingly stabbing and killing Doctor Stephen Strange. Yes. And we also have another kind of shocking reveal at the end of this book. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of high level thoughts here. What do you think? about issue two compared to issue one uh i liked it uh i think we should mention uh we both have read uh the it's called the red band or mm -hmm. uh, uh, age appropriate uh, ish, uh version of issue two uh the nine-year-old in me loves the blood and guts <laughs> yeah it, it definitely you do get more because the first issue we didn't read the red band we read just the regular edition yeah. this time we did get the red band and you there's definitely for more hardcore scenes here yeah i'll probably in my own time kind of compare the two and see what uh see what the difference is okay. i think probably the big thing the most gory thing is probably the uh the disemboweled body of stephen strange floating yeah. around in uh, the sanctum sanctorum mm -hmm. which you see kind of later in the uh, in the book yeah. uh, basically he's still alive in his like corporeal form i think he says yeah as some of the uh, the avengers and some of the other marvel heroes kind of gather at the sanctum sanctorum to come up with a plan but uh, ostensibly his uh, his actual body is he's kind of just dead and rotting and floating around it's it's pretty gnarly actually. disemboweled yeah yeah it's pretty gnarly uh basically you see kind of blade he's taken over the the impossible city yes thor's kind of strung up scarlet witch is strung up uh tatala's running around all vamped out uh blade is pretty much in in charge and he sets mm -hmm. his uh the blood coven which kind of got introduced to which is kind of a, a badass group of like super vampires or True. kind of meta human vampires yeah different from the other kind of uh kind of i guess you would say i don't know entry level vampires. dry your normal suckheads <laughs> yeah your normal suckheads yeah your your, your uh, <laughs> in infantry troop suckheads these are like your lieutenants and your commanders yeah and uh yeah so he sets them out on to finding his daughter which i are you familiar with the uh, the daughter of Blade Todd? I can honestly say I've until this issue I didn't even know he had a daughter. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, too. Uh, to the same thing uh, for me too. I'm trying to find her name here. Do you remember it right off? I think it's Brielle. Yeah, I think she has a superhero name. And give it at the beginning, uh, Bloodline. 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 Okay. Yeah, like Roman Reigns. Yeah. And, well, similar. And, and <laughs> she's uh, she's actually partnered up with Dracula. In yeah, this book. the Dracula. The Dracula. Yeah. It says, <laughs> and we get a little note too here because uh, he tells her he did not shepherd. Uh, I did not shepherd you all the way from Atlanta. Uh, asterisk. We get a little note to see Dracula Blood Hunt number one. I will not. Probably not going to happen. I will not be seeing that. <laughs> Thanks for the info, Tom, but I will not be seeing that. Uh, but, yeah, she's basically partnered up with uh, with uh, Dracula for most of this book. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, Dracula was kind of mentioned in issue one. He's kind of set up his own, I guess, vampire kind of like. Uh, what's the word looking for? Kind of like a vampire oasis, uh, kind of a like a gathering, kind of a genosha for vampires. Kind of a haven. A haven yeah. for vampires. Um, and in this, they're kind of set upon by the Blood Coven because obviously they're looking for Bloodline. They're looking for the daughter of Blade. Uh, they end up getting away pretty much, I think, don't they, with the help of um, is it the help of Hunter's Moon and that little group, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. I think it was actually the Avengers, I think, kind of. Come upon ah, this that's right. Yeah, it was the Avengers, yeah. So they have a little kind of a tussle again with, uh, you've got what, Dracula, Bloodline. They have a little tussle with the Avengers and the Blood Coven. Right. They help them out in kind of the fight. What did you think of the fight with the the Avengers kind of getting their, their comeuppance uh, or their revenge, not their comeuppance, their revenge against the Blood Coven uh, here? It was pretty good stuff. You know, you get the Avision. He's kind of, uh, I think the one he kind of run up against the last time, he's kind of got a ploy to stop that now. Negrim or whatever. Negrim, yeah. yeah. He, he says he's kind of like changing the patterns of his own mind to kind of counteract that and flies it straight up into the atmosphere so the sun can burn it to a crisp. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's kind of like the weaknesses that were exploited by the, the Blood Coven previously. They've kind of like try to figure out ways to kind of prevent that. So right. yeah, Vision kind of takes Megram off the board, kind of turns him into a rotisserie chicken up in the sky. And now Miss uh, Captain Marvel, she was kind of uh, taken out by him before. So now she's kind of uh, 
able to kind of fully let loose. She t- she's pretty much one on one versus Bloodstorm one. Yeah. Which there's a there's a really cool panel here. I like when she kind of punches Bloodstorm one through the wall and we kind of finally see his face revealed. Nice. <laughs> I know we talked about in issue one how like you know the artist you know Pepe here had like had like envisioned him as like he wears that armor that's like reminiscent of like uh, uh, Vlad's armor in uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Right. But he wears that armor as like kind of like a vision of like the perfect human, mm-hmm. but underneath he's like this hideous like man bat looking monster. Right. And like the panel here with like just the bloody fangs and all of that like all of that stuff is like really really strong. I think the art here to me the art is a lot stronger than in issue one. I thought it does look a little crisper, a little sharper. I think uh, Iron Man was taken out before by. I, um, the kind of the barbed wire mm-hmm. from the one of the members of the Blood Coven. I don't remember their name right off, but uh, he's kind of come back here now. He's got a little bit, not so much a tougher armor, but uh, he asked him if he can kind of get through these uh, wildly oscillating magnetic fields he's kind of creating, and he can't die. He can't. Do he it. can't die. He can't do Again, it. Again, they've taken all their weaknesses that were previously supported by the Blood Coven and kind of turned those into strengths. And pretty much Vision pretty much uh, kind of ends the whole thing when he kind of pretty much just busts out some solar energy. Yeah. He's like he's filled with Sunny D. You know, just <laughs> the power of the sun unleashed Todd on right. and basically sends them running for the hills pretty much. It's one of those like classic eighties cartoons of like until we meet again. Right. You know, kinda everybody runs away yeah, type they, deals. They flee. So eventually the whole crew ends up heading for the Sanctum Sanctorum. That's pretty much the ending of the book. Do you want to kind of set up what's happening at the Sanctum Sanctorum and kind of uh, take us through our last, uh, our little twist there, Todd? Yeah, we had kind of saw a little bit earlier there was a skirmish between like Tigra and Hunter's Moon that Spider-Man showed up with. I think they were just taking on some generic vampires. And they're trying to get the way their way to Doctor Strange's house too. Everybody figures out if anybody knows anything about what's going on. <laughs> right. If Blades Doctor, Yeah. If Blade's responsible, who's your next go to like when like really weird mystic occult vampire related stuff to Blade One, Doctor Strange Two. Right. So as they're having that battle, we see uh, Miles Morales' Spider-Man kind of show up, and he's like, well, hey, you know, well, I'll go there with you guys. He tags along. And it should be mentioned, too, previously had been approached by Blade at, on top on the rooftop in issue one. Right. And we did not see what happened in that conversation. Yeah. So. So he, they all kind of make and kind of congregate on the sanctum, and I think, it, is it was it Clea that let him in? Or it was Doctor Strange's Josh, corporal form yeah, that let him yes, in. Yes, exactly. And I think uh, Miss Captain Marvel's even like, you know, we got all this shit popping off, and you're just <laughs> floating around like a ghost. And he's <laughs> like, well, as you can clearly see, it's kind of necessary as my actual human body is kind of under distress. <laughs> exactly. And you see Clea just kind of holding his, you know, human form up above in kind of a force barrier because he's been completely gutted, disemboweled. Yes. And all of a sudden, uh, Spider-Man kind of doubles over. You know, something's wrong with Spidey, and he kind of rips his mask down, and he has been turned. turned Spider-Man into, is a vampire. He's a vampire, and that's that's your really big tease. That's your twist ending and your hook for issue three is not only as now issue one, the Avengers were taken out by a new super group of vampires. Blade seemingly has turned and is leading this group. And now for whatever happened between him and Miles Morales on that rooftop, uh, he has also joined looks like Spidey has been turned. Spidey has been turned into uh, a Spidey vampire. Apparently. Um, you know, it's a pretty quick read, honestly. Like I just kind of read yeah. through it again as we started this. Uh, that's not that's not a negative at all. There's there's some good action scenes and and it, it's a, like I said, it's a pretty brisk read. Like it's a pretty pretty light read, which is which is good and it's a nice kind of change of pace. But uh, what did you think overall, Todd? Like what's your what's your heat level for the series? We're two issues in out of five. We're not reading any tie-ins. We have no context for anything <laughs> else. Nothing that's happening in the other to the other Marvel characters. We really could give two shits because I'm not reading like 47 <laughs> other tie-ins. We're just focusing on main series. Right. So we're two issues down out of five. What's your heat level? What's your thoughts overall for issue two? I'm liking it. I'm honestly liking it. Yeah, like you said, it's a super quick read. It's very so far been kind of very action heavy. It's action oriented. Uh, you know, it, it's moving along at a good pace. I, I, the artwork is nice. Uh, you know, uh, vampires. They <laughs> had me at vampires. Yeah, I think that's. The, <laughs> I think that's the thing that's making it most interesting. Obviously, you have a major Marvel character, a uh, traditionally good guy who's he's always lived in the antihero world. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Blade, but now we have him thrown into 
the the bad guy role. Now, is he being controlled? Yeah. Is this something else? Is something else going on here? There might be more to be seen, you know, behind the scenes, so right. to speak, to why Blade is doing this. Maybe he's not just out and out turned. We'll, we'll see how the story goes. But I think that's what's interesting. Is not it's not some big galactic story so far. Mm-hmm. It's not some galactic level thread. It's not some cosmic entity that you can just kind of come down and punch it up. Yeah, there's like other kind of little vampires running around. The the sun has been blacked out. You get a lot different kind of visuals and a different kind of setting and like villains here. Yeah. Like I really think all the blood coming is like the, the, they're like visually kind of interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And like the action scenes have been pretty good. And I think the, I think that's the, the hook here. And that's why it's worth reading is like the, the vampire, the kind of dark, side of the Marvel Universe yeah. aspect of it that you don't, at least for me, I don't, I haven't read that many dark side of Marvel stories, vampires True. and the mystic arts and yeah. that kind of stuff. And, the, you know, the dark hold and that, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's, what's kind of hooking me into this story than most. And, it, and it's had some good twists. We still don't know. Obviously. Is Blade really doing all this? Blade is that Blade? <laughs> We've taken some of the most powerful Avengers still off the, you know, T'Challa's a mm. vampire right now. Thor still got a spike in his head. I don't know how that works. He's bleeding now. But he's still alive <laughs> at this point. Now Spider-Man has been turned. So there's a lot of intriguing things. I'm interested to see where this goes. Does it just turn into your typical fair? Like, are they going to have some really, like, hand-wavy reason why Blade is the bad, the bad guy? Like, yeah. I hope it is just a little bit more than he's being controlled by somebody or whatever. Right. I hope there's a good reason. You know, if you really want to go balls out, then just make him a bad guy for whatever reason for now. Like, maybe, you know, yeah. he's just doing it. I don't know if they'll have the balls to do that, but... I'm interested. We'll I see, think yeah. issue two still has me hooked. I mean, we know there's only going to be five. So for me, I'm I'm still definitely in. This is raising my curiosity of like what's going to happen next now, especially now that, that Miles is all a vampire. Yeah. And I will say if you can uh, get to it or access the illicit version, especially yeah. in a vampire story, you want to see it these, helps. you want to see these blood and gut stuff, yeah. Yeah, it helps. I definitely, like I said, I'm gonna go back in my own time and kind of look at the the differences of those panels of Doctor Strange, red band versus non red band, mm-hmm. and see see how how it stacks up. But yeah, if you're gonna read this, if you have an option, if you're paying money for this and you're reading this, get the red band version, yeah, for sure. Like definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely spend the extra money or whatever and buy the red band version. But uh, uh. Todd, ready to go to review score? I'm ready. So give us your review score and any final thoughts you want to share for us in uh, for Blood Hunt number two. Uh, like I say, you got me. You had me at issue one with vampires, and you, you still got a hold on me with another hook ending, uh, Spider-Man a Vampire. I want to see where this goes. Like you say, the main story is only five issues. I, I'm ready to keep going with this. I think overall this is a seven. I think it's a good, solid read. Yep, complete agreement here. I'm hooked on. I'm at a seven as well with you. I think this is a good book. Uh, it's not great. It's not my, It's not blowing me away. It's just really solid, mm-hmm. really good, and it's hooking me enough to kind of stick around, to kind of come back for more, to plunk my money down, to see what happens in yeah. issue three. Um, I hope we do expand this a little bit more. I like the cast we have, but like I would like to see – Maybe a peek in the mainline book at what's going on with some of the other characters that I'm not going to read tie-ins for. <laughs> right. Yeah, I refuse to. <laughs> like, maybe give me little glimpses of something, you know, yeah. like that. You know, kind of expand the, the the world a little bit more. But you don't have to go too crazy with it. Yeah. But uh, you've got me right now, Marvel. You've got me with your little crossover event. Mm-hmm. You can stick your tie-ins up your ass. <laughs> but you've got me with your mainline tie. You know, your mainline book okay. here. So I'm sticking around. Like I said, I yeah. think it's a pretty solid good read Todd so we'll definitely be back to check out issue number three um, for us I think that's it for this episode really Todd yeah. anything else you want to add I'm good man all right uh, be sure folks uh, check out our our number one issue number one review uh, hit that like button subscribe to the channel it really does help us out we appreciate you sticking around and watching this video yeah. uh, for us Tal Capes will return we want to thank you so much for watching until next time bye guys see you guys <laughs>